We know we should do something, but somehow we can't get motivated. We know that if we put in the effort, we'll get there, but because we don't like the activity or we're just not feeling great. Now we could be quote unquote, not feeling great, not feeling motivated because our dopamine baseline is low. I'm very familiar with the procrastination process. So how can we overcome procrastination? Key to getting out of that pain trough is one of two things. I already told you earlier, you can just wait. You can wait till your motivation comes back. And a lot of people do wait. In fact, they procrastinate. They start doing other things that are less painful than the state that they happen to be in when they are you know, trying to get into gear to go work out because they realize not everyone wants to do that or to study or to have a hard conversation, whatever it is. And what do they do? They start engaging in activities that we and indeed they would not consider pleasurable activities. They start, for instance, cleaning the house. So seemingly out of nowhere, they start engaging in these activities that normally are not intrinsically pleasurable for them. They're not highly motivated to do them. As a replacement for doing the very thing that they quote unquote need to do or ought to do and that they're procrastinating to do. What they're essentially doing here is a mild type of addiction replacement. In other words, rather than be in the painful state and wait for it to pass, they're doing things that give them some sense of accomplishment, ostensibly to give them the sense that they're completing things. And perhaps, and I don't know because I'm not um, in the psychology of, of knowing what other people are thinking, perhaps in order to generate the momentum in order to get engaged enough or motivated enough to study or work out or whatever activity it is that they're trying to avoid through procrastination. Now, what's interesting about this dynamic is, first of all, it's extremely common. And second of all, a lot of people will use this as a tactic so that they get very close to the deadline to complete something. And then they go into a sort of pseudo panic and then use anxiety as a way to leverage their mental and physical resources to complete that thing. Now, how do I know the contour of this so well? How do I understand the inner dynamics of it? Well, part of that relates to my work as a neurobiologist and reading the papers that I'll mention to you in a moment. But it also relates to the fact that I'm somebody who waits quite a while, <laughs> right up until the sort of last minute possible to complete something for activities that I don't want to do. Something I've been working on my whole life. Well, it turns out that there are findings from within the addiction literature that turn out to be very powerful towards leveraging our way out of procrastination. And it has to, imagine you're in an amotivated state. You're just not feeling motivated. You're procrastinating. You may think, okay, the thing to do here is something. I'll clean the house. I'll take care of some bills. I'll do something. Or I'll just wait. Those approaches, as we talked about before, generally don't work or at least don't work quickly, or they lead you right up to the deadline and that's the deadline that forces you to get something done, or you just don't get it done and you don't succeed in your goal. That happens a lot as well. However, if you were to take that state of being unmotivated, of procrastinating, and actually do something that's harder than being in that amotivated state, in other words, doing something that's more effortful, even painful, you can rebound yourself out of that dopamine trough much more quickly. So what do I mean you wanna put yourself in a state that's worse than or harder than the state that you're in or do something quote unquote more painful? The reality is that the dopamine system works according to what feels hard or easy in the moment. In other words, if you're feeling amotivated, you need to do something and put yourself into a state that's harder than the state you're in so for instance, if you're sitting around feeling unmotivated or you find yourself tending to tasks that are irrelevant to the goal that you really should be focused on, you need to put your body and mind into a state of discomfort quickly. And the way to do that is to either engage in some tangential activity, meaning an activity not related to your goal that puts your body into a very different state. So here again, I'll default to the obvious one, which is something like, cold shower or cold immersion, which not only increases dopamine long-term or over several hours rather, but for most people is experienced as pain. That pain causes a rebound out of that dopamine trough faster than it would occur if you had just stayed in that amotivated state and waited for it to go away or done something like cleaning up that for whatever reason felt like it required less friction. When I say friction, I mean limbic friction. Your limbic system is always in this dialogue with your forebrain. And limbic friction goes two ways. Limbic friction can be you're tired and you don't wanna do something. 
And so you have to quote unquote motivate to do it, energize yourself to do it. Or limbic friction can be that you're nervous and scared and anxious to do something and you have to calm yourself in order to lean forward into action in order to do that thing despite the anxiety.